Hi everyone, um, welcome to Peru again. Um, so you don't get too bored, I'm going to put two days into one today. Uh, I'm going to talk about my day four and day five. So um, day four here in the Sacred Valley of Peru, we went hiking. And I was a little bit worried because I've got a bit of a dodgy knee. Um, but we did a hike that is, is I guess some people do, um, to Wichicosco, which is a not very often visited archaeology site. I probably said that not quite right, but more or less. Um, and obviously we'll give you the details later. But we did it in a way so that it was a little bit longer transfer at the beginning, but it meant that we could do a very little uphill and then basically work our way along the mountain to the archaeology site, which meant it was a lot easier. It's quite a long hike. It was about five hours, um, but it was much less arduous than the way other people do it, which I was very thankful for. <laughs> and we had llamas come with us to carry all the equipment for the lovely picnic we had when we got to the archaeology site. And the llamas were so much fun. You know, sometimes they were behind us, ahead of us, with us. Um, and it just added a wonderful dimension. Also, the family that, you know, were herding the llamas with us and helping us and setting up. It meant that money was going back into the community where we started the hike from, which was great because it's a community that doesn't see tourists normally. Um, so the hike itself was fabulous. So we start by walking up, um, the side of the mountain in the sacred Valley. Then we start walking along with amazing views down to La Mai and that, that area of the sacred Valley, um, ju just stunning. And then this massive Canyon appears and we start to walk down through this Canyon and it's an Inca trail, not the Inca trail that we know you know, we think of when we think of Machu Picchu and the Inca Trail, but of course there's loads of other Inca trails crisscrossing Peru. Um, and so uh, we got to uh, um, we got to an area uh, with Inca ruins, and then we walked down through the canyon, um, which then had lots of Inca terracing, and oh, and it had a, a very important puerta, a, pu a door, double door, and they said the double doors were very important. And just a beautiful canyon walking through, completely different, you know, biodiversity because of the climate and the temperature being in this canyon. Um, and then we come out and then again, we continue along the side of the mountain till we get to the archaeology site. And the archaeology the site itself is, is really gorgeous with incredible terracing, um, amazing views down into the valley again just stunning a real you know you you don't think it's going to be anything great because it's not famous but it was absolutely stunning there's so many archaeology sites here that are that way that you can get off the beaten track and enjoy so we had our wonderful luxury picnic right there in the ruins looking at this incredible scenery with no other tourists and we just felt like uh, you know royalty it was really wonderful um and then you walk down the switchbacks, the car picks you up halfway up the hill and you're off. So that was great. That was our day yesterday. And then today we had a fantastic community experience. So we went up from Lamai way, 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 way up into the mountainside to a very small community. Again, one that doesn't see many tourists. There are lots of community projects around the Sacred Valley that you can go and visit um, and that Nico works with, of course. Um, but to, for us, just for this trip, we decided to go to one that's just establishing itself. Um, and because of that, it was really wonderfully fun and rustic and flowing. And um, I've written the names down, sorry, because I couldn't remember them all off by heart. But Ilerio, Nativo, Santos and Francisca were our main guides. And then there was another two ladies cooking for us. And they were all such hilarious characters. I mean, and they we bonded. It was amazing. We really bonded. Santos had this incredible sense of humor. Um, Ilaria was the older gentleman who was the shaman who was playing the drums. And he blessed the earth when we did some um, cultivation. He, you know, did the ceremony for Pachamama. And um, 
Francesca was the only woman, well, apart from the cooks, she was there and she was showing us about textiles. So we went on a little hike. We were accompanied by um, Ilaria. Yes, Ilaria was on the drum and Santos was on the flute. And apparently they often, an accomp- they often accompany things that they do with music. So we, we walked with music and the, the view was incredible. Um, down into the Sacred Valley and there was a mountain and then fields behind us. It was really stunning. So we did a little walk. There's a, a, there's a pre-Inca settlement there, which was a pre-Inca village. So there's just ruins there now. And then we walked up to a, a plateau where we had the we had like a little little snack, um, which was wonderful. It was different types of potatoes and corn, and um, like picante, chopped onions with lemon and tomato and a little bit of chili, um, and and kind of a salad. Everything that they've grown, everything organic, they grow organically up there. Um, was fabulous. So after we had our little snack, then we went off and we planted beans and they showed us how to plant beans and as I mentioned before we planted them we they did this ceremony uh, for Pachamama to bless the earth I guess and um, and then we had a hilarious time planting the beans and racing each other um, and then we picked some other vegetables it was just fabulous the idea of that was just that you you go and you visit it's not laid on for the tourists you go and do what work needs to be done at that time in the season so you never quite know what you're going to do. It just depends where you are in the season and what they need doing. So you're not just doing something for the sake of it. They really did need the beans planting. Um, so that was fantastic. I can't... Yeah, and they were just wonderful, wonderful characters. Um, and then we came way back down into the valley and we went to meet a man called Tito, who Nico and his wife Brisa have worked with a lot in their wellness programs and just general cultural programs. He is an expert in ceremonial and healing instruments and music. And he is that kind of person that's like a guru. You know, you walk in the room and you feel his energy and you immediately feel calm and as if all your problems just went away. And you sit and you listen to him speak and he talks about his his instruments Some are very ancient instruments and some are contemporary versions of ancient history instruments and some his son has actually invented. And it's quite incredible. So they all make uh, different kind of sounds which are meant to give different energy and healing qualities. I mean, I can't even explain it, but we've we've taken, um, we've done a video and an interview with Tito and I recommend watching it. It was really incredibly special and you know, it was hard to kind of recreate what you would have in an experience with Tito. So we just did a a kind of an interview and he played some of his instruments. But um, he does a variety of things and works with Nico and Brisa, as I said, on wellness, um, wellness retreats or just wellness days, or it could just be learning about his instruments and his story, which is fascinating. So again, two incredible days so varied, so different. And again, always meeting incredible characters and seeing the real the real Peru, if I'm allowed to say that. I know that sounds a bit stupid. Um, but it was, yeah, it was amazing. And I hope you enjoy the photos. Um, and later on, we'll have more professional videos to show you so you can really see what these experiences are like for your clients. So thank you for listening again and hope to see you either tomorrow or in a couple of days, so that you don't get too bored of these little video diaries. Bye-bye.